Welcome back and welcome to chapter 8, 8, 1, and 8, 2. We're starting with differential equations and we're beginning the most absolutely brain dead plug and check part of the semester. It's literally follow these steps when you see uh, this type of differential equation. The hard part is always then uh, recognizing what kind of method to use to solve your differential equations and not being a moron and making some dumb algebra mistake in the middle of your calculations. So uh, as a disclaimer for this video, then this first video, uh, we're going to cover three main things uh, in this first video. Uh, just uh, just a linear homogeneous uh, ODEs, uh, ODEs. Uh, the second one then uh, we're going to talk about uh, the same thing uh, with complex values, uh, complex values. And then the third then is going to be um, an initial value problem. And I guess this really should be like, this really should have like an A, B, C part where we have uh, or real roots, uh, imaginary roots, and then C is initial value problem okay and all of these are just going to be off the top of my head and so uh, these really are really simple and let's just get going and see uh, what we run into so all right so for a all right again i'm assuming that you you went to class you you know what kind of what's going on with odes and i don't have to explain them uh in detail or with uh too much uh theory behind it so let's say i have the following y double prime oh uh, what who 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 cares plus uh plus what plus eight y uh plus fifteen uh plus eight y prime plus fifteen y is equal to zero okay and so what do we do okay so we rewrite this then as d squared plus eight d plus fifteen applied to y and hopefully you know what d is d is a derivative operator um is equal to zero solve for the roots of d i get d plus three and d plus five right, as my roots, and so d then is equal to negative 3 or negative 5, and so that means the solution to this differential equation then is going to be y is equal to c1 e to the negative 3x uh, plus c2 e to the negative 5x, right. Cool beans, so that was very simple. All right, let's take another look at uh, this. Let's say I have y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y is equal to 0, okay? And actually, da, 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 let's make this negative 4y prime. Why not? All right. And so what do I get? Well, this here, I get d squared minus 4d plus 4 applied to y is equal to 0. Uh, here it becomes d minus 2, uh, d minus 2. And so you'll see that d then is equal to negative 2 and negative 2, right? So what becomes my solution? My solution is y is equal to c1 e to the, uh, or, or not negative 2, negative 2, sorry. I'm, being a, I'm, I'm breaking one of the rules of differential equations, which is not being a moron. Uh, d is positive 2 and positive 2. And so here I guess c1 is equal to uh, plus e to the 2x, uh, or c1 e to the 2x, right? And uh, it's really tempting to say the second one is c2 e to the 2x, but then the problem there is then that these guys are linearly dependent uh, by a factor of some scalar, so that doesn't work out. And so in order to make this work out then, uh, because we have the second two, right, here's the first two, here's the second two, um, then this is going to be c2x e to the 2x. And I didn't mention this in detail because I'm assuming you guys know how to do this already. But again, this guy then goes into the exponential, uh, into the exponent, right? So uh, here's that, and then here's that, okay? And so when you have repeated roots, you just add x's. Uh, if I had a third root that I had to add, let's say I had three twos, um, then my third solution would be c3x squared e to the 2x, and so on and so forth, right? But here, again, we are only dealing with a repeated double root. Okay, cool. So that's part A. That's dealing with real roots now. Uh, now let's talk about dealing with imaginary roots, okay? And how do we deal with, uh, you know, different equations that have an imaginary root in them? So, for example, and oh, let me actually just pull it up so I don't do something dumb. Uh, let's say I say y double prime minus 14y prime 
uh, minus 50, uh, plus 58y is equal to zero. So this is d squared minus 14d plus 58 applied to y. Okay, uh, you don't, don't try to factor that. So we get uh, 14 plus or minus the square root of b squared, well, 196, minus 4ac, four times 58 is 240. Yes, 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 4ac. Yeah, okay, that, that, that looks right. Um, Is it 58 times, four, oh, 58 times four, right? Oh, I'm being dumb. Okay, 32, 232, okay, cool. And so this is 232 uh, all over 2a, okay? And so this is what d is equal to. And so this actually becomes seven uh, plus or minus three i, right? So it's d is equal to seven plus or minus three i. So, all righty, it's, it's tempting then to just go y then is equal to c1 e to the seven plus three i, x and uh, plus c2 e to the 7 minus 3i x. However, Euler discovered this thing. I think it's Euler, one of the Greek mathematicians. I, 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 I should know this. I'm a math major. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Euler. Uh, says that, oh, well, e to the a plus bi apply the x is actually uh, e to the ax times uh, cosine bx plus i sine bx okay and so and so okay so all right that means we have to break this guy down and so now we get y is equal to c1 e to the 7x times cosine 3x plus i sine 3x and then here i get plus c2 e to the 7x um and this becomes cosine 3x minus i sine 3x right, just because uh, this is a minus sign here, right, okay, and cool, all right, and um, um, yeah, so, so what, uh, the, the, the idea is this, this the, we can find some C2, right, we can find a C1, and we can find a C2, um, that, that, that have, First of all, C1 and C2 can be complex valued, right? So there's some linear combination of these guys that can make the imaginary values just disappear. Um, and, and the idea then is, okay, when you write it like this, this actually gives us too much information because this, the terms with the I's, like they're never gonna show up uh, when we have just real value coefficients, okay? And so the idea then is we actually just look at um, we just need to look at us. Uh, we just need to choose a sine term. We just need to choose a cosine term. That's actually it. So all we have to do then is take uh, c1 e to the 7x and we say this becomes cosine 3x plus sine 3x. Okay, so I just I just take a cosine term and I take a sine term and I just drop uh, the, the i. Okay, so the, actually that this, this isn't the right way to write it. Uh, this the right way to write it then is c1 e to the 7x cosine 3x plus c2 e to the 7x sine 3x all right and so then uh, yeah so the sine gets its own c2 term uh, constant which can eat since you can what the way you can think about it is that the c2 has eaten the i all right and then you have c2 e to the 7x sine 3x and then here you have c1 e to the 7x uh, cosine 3x okay and Again, this 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 does this isn't very intuitive at first, but as you get more practice um, and you go along, this actually gets a lot easier. So again, uh, let's let's do another example. Let's say I have y double prime uh, plus uh, let's say four y prime uh, plus five is equal to zero, right? And so this is d squared plus eh, d squared plus four d plus five apply to y is equal to zero. Uh, it's super tempting to factor this, but again, don't be a moron. And so this becomes negative four plus or minus the square root of b squared, 16 minus 20 all over two. And this looks like then this is, becomes negative two plus or minus i, okay? And so now y then is going to be equal to uh, c1 e to the negative two x cosine x plus c2 either the negative 2x sine x 
right? So all I did was take this two, this goes up here, the one, right, the, the I uh, corresponds to one, right, one I, and so this becomes like one times cosine X, or, or sine of, that's wrong, uh, sine of one X, and this is the sine, uh, cosine one X, and this is the sine of one X, but because it's one, right, one times I, uh, one times I, it doesn't actually matter, right? You don't have to show the I. So again, uh, for complex value ones, then you find the root, and in this case here, right, this is seven plus three I, so the seven goes here, the seven goes here, and then the three goes to the plus, uh, the sine and the cosines, okay? And that's what you do with complex valued roots of differential equations. Lastly, let's talk about initial value problems then. So you might get some problem that looks like this. You might get d double prime uh, plus 2d prime plus 1 is equal to 0 uh, or plus d double prime plus 2d plus 1. y double prime plus 2y prime plus y is equal to 0, okay? And you're also told then that y of 0 is equal to 1 and then y prime at 0 is equal to, let's say, negative 2, all right? So what is this? This is an initial value problem, right? You're given a y0 and you're given a y prime at 0. And the idea then is instead of just leaving it in a general form, like here where you have like a C1 and you have a C2 constant and you don't know what those are, uh, the idea is having these two initial values uh, actually lets you figure out what uh, those C1s and C2s are, okay? And so the way to approach them is this. So you do your, uh, you, you do your whole thing. Uh, d squared plus 2d uh, plus uh, 1 applied to y is equal to 0. So this is d plus 1 squared uh, is equal to 0. So d is equal to negative 1, comma, negative 1. My pen needs some recalibrating. And so you get y is equal to uh, c1 e to the negative x plus c2 x e to the negative x, right? Okay, and now you need to take advantage that y0 is equal to 1. So y at 0 is actually equal to c1 e to the 0, right, negative 0, uh, which is just 0, plus c2 times 0 e to the negative 0, but that, that this is just 0, right? So then you get y of 0 is equal to c1. e to the 0 is 1, right? So e to the 1 times 1. And this is equal to 1. So from y of 0 being 1, you can see that y of 0 is, uh, from y of 0 equaling 1, you can see that c1 then is equal to 1, okay? And then y prime is then negative c1 e to the negative x plus uh, c2 uh, e to the negative x plus c negative, plus c2 x e to the negative x times a negative sign because you have to use the chain rule uh, on c2 x e to the uh, negative x. Actually, it's not the chain rule, it's the product rule, I think, where here you take the derivative with respect to the x, and then here you take the derivative with respect to e to the negative x, which is why the negative sign comes down, okay? And now you say, okay, y prime at zero. Well, what is that? Well, that's negative c1 e to the zero plus c2 e to the neg uh, zero plus uh, uh, or minus then uh, c2 zero e to the zero. All right, what is this? This is then negative c1 plus c2, right? And this guy is zero, so, the, so it doesn't matter, okay? And then, all right, and what is this equal to? This is equal to negative two, right? Y prime of zero is equal to negative two, but we know what C1 is. C1 is one. So this is equal to negative one plus C2, which is equal to negative two. And so C2 is equal to negative one. And so my final solution then is this guy, but rewritten with C1 and C2 known. So we say Y is equal to uh, E to the negative X minus x e to the negative x is going to be our particular solution and if you plug in zero you'll get one and if you take the derivative and you plug in zero you'll get negative two and that's how you deal with initial value problems and so we've covered now the three most fundamental 
uh, the th three most fundamental homo uh, like problems dealing with homogeneous uh, different linear homogeneous differential equations. What's next? What's next is that you see how all these right hand sides were zeros right in this video, right? That's a zero. This is a zero. Uh, everything is a zero. That's what homogeneous means, right? Homogeneous means that the right hand side is zero. So for the rest of the chapter, 8, 3, and on, right-hand side's not going to be zero, and that makes these problems infinitely times harder. But then again, uh, you're, the types of problems that you're going to get are going to be the same. Find the general solution, uh, find, you know, find the particular solution, which solves the right-hand side, and we'll get to that. And you'll get your initial value problems as well. So, all right, so thanks for sticking through uh, this three-parter from 8, 1, and 8, 2. And now we'll move on to some of the harder problems and we'll start with A3, which is uh, Annihilators. The book calls it like, the book calls it something stupid, but we'll figure it out.